Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about my minimalist sleep system that I used to cycle the entire west coast of the United States. Oh, but now you're probably like, what the hell's going on? Uh, I know, I know. Uh, but here, let me, let me just explain. Let me explain a little more. So naturally a good sleep system starts with a good foundation. This is my Ortlieb seat pack size large. Inside it I store my tent and my sleeping pad. This is the NeoWare Xtherm sleeping pad. So it adds extra warmth and insulation from the ground. I use a carbon fiber trekking pole as my tent pole. I inflate my sleeping pad, unpack and inflate my X-ped pillow. I found that compressing everything in their separate stuff sacks keeps things organized and it helps save more room in my pack. I have a hoodless jacket, so I'll unpack my hood first. This is a Goose Feet gear down hood. This is a Black Rock gear down vest. Of all the puffy layers in my sleep system, this is probably the only one that I'll wear on my bike during the day. If it ever gets too chilly, I'll throw this on to add a little bit of extra warmth. x Light Down Jacket by Mont Bell. It's a great jacket with no frills. It's got no pockets, no extra zippers, just the main zipper down the center. And these are the real game changers right here. These are my Goose Feet Gear Down Pants. These really allowed me to lighten up my pack by not having to carry a dedicated sleeping bag. These also help a lot with motivation in those cold, cold mornings where you really don't want to get out of bed. You can leave these on while you break down camp. And while you're breaking down camp, you'll build up a lot of internal body heat by just like packing all your bags and stuff. So usually by the time I'm done packing most everything, uh, I'm pretty warm and I can just like throw my sweaty bike clothes on from the day before and uh, just get ready to hit the road. Thank you, Ben over at Goose Feet Gear. These pants are freaking awesome. And these are my gloves and down socks. The down socks have the option of an overboot. This overboot consists of an EVA foam layer and a Dyneema outer boot. The EVA foam can double as a camp seat and the outer boot can double your entire system as a camp shoe, which is pretty cool. So this is what all those components look like when it's all put together. You can see that I'm wearing the Blackrock gear vest underneath the jacket. And I do this to block any uh, kind of excess heat loss through the midsection. Just because they're separate garments, they're kind of slippery. A lot of times my back was pretty exposed. So, But uh, tucking the vest into the pants actually solves that problem. This is my main wind blocking layer that I wear on bike throughout the day. This is the Montbell Tachyon jacket, and you would be amazed at how light this thing is and how much warmth it provides for the weight that it is. I wear this as a vapor barrier layer at night, and it's my main wind blocking layer during the day. So you're going to see that mantra throughout this kit of multi-use is king. Anytime you have a multi-use item, you're eliminating other potential duplicate items in your kit. These are my Montbell Tachyon wind pants, and they're not to be confused with the Dynamo wind pants. The Dynamo wind pants have a zipper in the back. These are a lot simpler and lighter. And these are the only pair of pants that I actually carried on my entire trip. So they definitely were a multi-use item. And I pretty much wore them every night underneath my down pants. Uh, again, I typically layer throughout the night. So I'd start off with a lot less on and then throughout the night, I'd just add these layers. So it also makes a very comfortable system where you don't get overly hot and sweaty. These are my super cheap solution to VBL socks. And these are the umbrella bags that I put over my base layer socks. And you'd be surprised at just how much your feet sweat throughout the night. And I really mainly use these, well, one, they add warmth. Two, they really keep my uh, down socks from getting all funky uh, with feet sweat. Uh, that's one thing that is the major downside of down it is hard to wash. Sometimes I'll wear this as town clothes when I'm doing laundry or something like that. This is just the layer that I wear underneath my down to really protect that down, protect your investment. This is my 100% merino wool buff. So yeah, I combine the buff with the smart wool beanie and it makes a pretty good wool head protection layer. And eye mask and earplugs are pretty much essential for me now. Um, and this is a special eye mask where it allows your eyelids to move underneath it. Kind of look like bug eyes when you're wearing them, but 
Anyway, it, it really allows your eyelids to move to allow you to get into REM sleep. This is my smart wool base layer top. And these are my smart wool long johns. On the left, you'll see my possum down gear. This is my possum down gloves and possum down socks. I like these a lot, but they're kind of not very durable, but they are extremely warm and they stay warm when wet. So I'll wear these in the shoulder season, like spring where it's getting a little bit chillier. Um, and I'll have these dedicated gloves, uh, kind of liner gloves in my kit. Uh, but for most other times of the year in summer, on the right, I have my smart wool liner socks. Those are really, really lightweight and just kind of a very thin liner sock layer that I'll wear underneath the VBL socks. And those are my, on the right are my D-feet gloves. Those are my cycling gloves, so I'll wear those during the day. Again, another multi-use piece of kit there. Uh, these D-feet gloves are indestructible. They're almost like work gloves too. Uh, so when I'm out collecting wood or I need to protect my hands in some way, I'll wear these to do that. And this is what the entire summer base layer system kind of looks like all together and laid out. In 2020, I purchased the Smart, Smart Wool Intra Knit base layer, and it's a uh, significantly heavier. It's a 250 weight, I think. But um, it's if you're looking for something in the winter persuasion, or you want to be doing a lot more cold weather bikepacking, I highly recommend something like the Intra Knit as a swap out for the kind of hundred weight uh, base layer that I typically use in summer. So I'll use uh, I'll throw in my uh, slightly thicker uh, wool gloves, the possum wool gloves, and a heavier winter hat in the, in the winter season or shoulder season. So that just about wraps it up. Uh, all that down and wool stuff fits in this Apadura Expedition front bag. Uh, this is the waterproof kind. Um, yeah, this was really helpful in the Pacific Northwest where it's really wet. So again, to review, this is the wool base layer next to skin layer, followed by the vapor barrier layer, which is also a wind blocking layer. On top of that, I will wear the down. I don't recommend down in a very wet climate. So if you're gonna be in a wet climate, you could probably find most of these items in synthetic versions, which would probably perform a lot better. Uh, so I've tested this system down to about 35 degrees Fahrenheit or around one degrees Celsius. If you're a cold sleeper, it might not perform at those ratings, but yeah, so your mileage may vary. And um, I think that you can even expand on this system. So this year I purchased an outer quilt. So I was planning on wearing this inside of a quilt on the outside. So I purchased a synthetic Mountain Laurel Designs Spirit Quilt 48. The Spirit Quilt by itself is fairly adaptable. This one's a size large, so I can really loft out my down underneath it and kind of roll them around. I'm a fairly active sleeper. So this is what it looks like when it's in kind of quilt mode. You can zip everything down, cinch everything down when it's really cold out, or you can lay it out kind of like a sheet. The other cool feature that I paid a little bit extra for that I think is gonna be kind of helpful if I wanna take this as my primary layer is you can sew, have them sew in a poncho head slot. And this can basically turn into your primary top layer as well. So you can kind of eliminate your jacket if you wanted to for that particular type of situation where you know the climate might not change and you, you, you know, might wanna go really fast and light. With everything combined, I'm pretty certain I could take this down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative six degrees Celsius, especially if we add in the thicker base layer that I was talking about earlier. I carry a space blanket as a kind of insurance policy and a replacement for my ground sheet if I ever punch a hole in it or something like that. Uh, this is one of those items though that you can't get back into the package once you take it out. So just bear that in mind. As if I wasn't carrying enough down, I decided to get a down pillowcase. I have yet to take this on a trip, but I think I might try this on my next winter adventure. For shelter, I have been using a Mountain Laurel Designs Solo Plus with the perimeter netting. I just use a cheap polycryo ground sheet uh, underneath my sleeping pad. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to go into any more detail on anything. If you have any suggestions for future videos, things you've seen in my videos you want more explanation on, just let me know. I hope everyone's staying safe out there with the wildfires and the viruses and uh, yeah, keep it real. Oh,